Hello everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic, hope we're doing well, and today I'll be doing a review of the 1989 film The Abyss. This yesterday was the first time that I had ever seen this movie. I know, I know, sometimes people wonder how it is that I have a movie review card based on the films that I haven't seen, but I have seen a lot of other films. <laughs> That all being said, uh, very excited to talk about this movie because there is a lot to be said, not just about the movie itself, but also about the official releases of the film, which I think sometimes even gets more attention than the movie itself. But before I go any further, please be sure to smash the like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, smash like on Minds.com. I do upload to multiple platforms. That way you can go to whichever platform you wish to support. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this film. So as it says, right here 1989 american sci-fi film written and directed by james cameron anyone who's been a follower of the channel for a while knows that i'm not really the biggest james cameron fan mostly just because of avatar i just really am not a fan of that movie i think it's vastly overrated i think the visual effects though the world building effects are pretty cool when it comes to the actual like characters themselves i'm just really not that big a fan of it and of course the story in my opinion, is is overdone and, and quite abysmal. This is good James Cameron, though, and James Cameron can indeed do really good work. Obviously, one can look to films like Terminator 2 as a great example of, you know, James Cameron, when he's in his element, can really produce some great cinema, and I think that this is yet another example of great cinema. As it says here, it's an American submarine sinking in the Caribbean. A U.S. search and rescue recovery team works on an oil platform crew racing against Soviet vessels to recover the boat deep in the ocean they encounter something unexpected. And so this film's been out for a while, so potential spoiler territory if you have never seen this film and wanted to see it before. I actually didn't know that it was going to go into this more um, comments like this introduction of an alien species race living at the bottom of the ocean. Um, but again, it being, knowing that it was science fiction, I knew that there was going to be something there uh, at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know. I've been kind of in this weird sci-fi kick recently. I've watched other films like Underwater recently and some other uh, more well-known and just all around uh, more well received uh, sci fi films. And so I was very excited to see this for the very sci fi uh, parts of it. And I can say that this film has a lot of things going for it. So let's talk about some of the positives. Obviously, I think the direction and writing from James Cameron is pretty good. You have some really great dialogue, some really interesting storytelling. And I think that all of this really culminates in James Cameron having full control of the reins. And you can really tell that because of how many underwater shots are actually in this movie, to the point of it being just pretty impressive, not only from the fact that he was able to pull these off, but also for the actors involved in this project, too. Like, seriously, kudos to Ed Harris, Mary Elizabeth, uh, Mastra, Mastrantono, Mastrantonio, Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, Michael Bean. I think that every single one of them really deserves a lot of recognition because, I mean, so many of these shots, they are literally underwater. They're having to hold their breath. They're having to learn these basic skills. And I always appreciate movies like that where you can tell that the actors are doing a lot of their own stunts and having to do a lot of things that typically would be reserved for, for stunt teams or for other types of movies. Just to have that in a movie is always a really cool thing to see. So, Shout out to the actors and James Cameron for coming up with that and for shooting them as, as well as he did. This also, of course, leads to one of the biggest issues with the film, which is not even the film itself, right? Because the film, as I said, has great, uh, you know, great storytelling, direction. The acting is fantastic. Love me some Ed Harris, some young Ed Harris in this movie. All of the actors really are able to bring it uh, from, from the uh, full characters like Ed Harris to some of the supporting characters as well. All of them are able to really shine in this movie. Alan Silvestri does the music for this, and again, it's very well done. Uh, Michael Salomon being able to work with James Cameron on creating a lot of these shots, especially the underwater ones, fantastic. The visual effects for the 1980s as well, uh, especially of the actual alien species itself. I mean, seriously, at the very end, I, I'm just kind of, the more I'm thinking about it and thinking back to how good the actual alien effects themselves were when they showed the full-fledged alien and, and the ship and everything it really was fantastic especially for that time period i think a lot of that still holds up some of the lights like the lights moving around things like that 
Obviously, those are a little bit harder because I think that those, you know, require a little less detail all around, and so those don't look nearly as well. But one of the biggest reasons why those effects may not look as good as it does, and the biggest issue and the biggest problem with this movie specifically, is the presentation. So this is available on Amazon Prime, and on Amazon Prime, for some reason, and again, I, I don't know more about the film to be able to know why it is that it's this way, but it's a box. It's like, basically, it feels like you've, you, you're cutting off... Uh, two edges of the frame of the shot that you can't see. It's like old TV shows, right? The TV shows that were made for that 4 by 3 aspect ratio that were made for the square television set. That's how it's presented on Amazon Prime. And of course, it's presented in the theoretically the best transfer of the film that we have so far and that is the biggest problem is that the actual presentation of the movie the preservation of the film and and making it available in the best quality is just abysmal as far as the actual quality of of the film stock itself and i know that james cameron has has gone on record to say that the abyss is one of those movies that he would like to be able to give a proper uh, 4k transfer to but for him it's about time and that's where my frustration comes in because while he's off in pandora land and doing a thousand Avatar films that no one really asked for, he has amazing films like The Abyss that he could spend some time on, uh, you know, going through it frame by frame, making it look as crisp and clean as possible because there's a couple of shots towards the end especially, some of the wide shots as the ship is rising out of the water where you can tell for some reason in the original transfer, the at least the transfer that's on Amazon Prime, that they had like lower quality film stock or, or it wasn't as cleaned up because you can see a lot of graininess that comes in and you can just almost tell it seems like it's being done with a completely different uh, camera setup as far as the actual film quality. And so that's something that could, I think, be fixed and addressed and made more even with the rest of the film if they were actually to go in and do a transfer. So it's sad that the worst thing about this movie is the actual presentation of the film is the actual uh, release of the film onto media because this is also a film that you really can't find on on legit Blu-ray or even on from what I could see even on like DVD so basically it seems like if you can find a, a, a copy of this movie the the quality of the film is not going to be that great. I imagine if Amazon Prime has it in that boxed out ratio, that's probably how the other releases are going to look too. Again, I haven't done as much research to find out about that, but still, like that's the only really negative part about this movie is the fact that it was um, that it was able to, or rather that the release was able to be that shoddy. Uh, as you can see, the budget was only around forty-three to forty-seven million, which I know in uh, today's dollars is probably closer to the 100 to $150 million big budget film. So it was a big budget movie at the time, making around $90 million, so seemingly making its money back. And so definitely not a financial uh, flop by any means. Uh, apparently there is a special edition, so it says in the extended version, the events in the film are played against a backdrop of conflict between the U.S. and Soviet Union. That actually, I think, kind of makes a little bit of sense because there's references to that in the version that I watched on uh, Amazon Prime. I don't think that is the uh, special edition cut of the movie uh, because they don't really go in as much detail about that because one of the things you see at the very end of the film as the ship is rising out of the water are all of these other ships surrounding it and so we assume then that those are soviet ships or something to that effect but obviously having more scenes and more backstory on that could probably have helped fill in some of those gaps but even the actual regular edition that was seen that I saw on Amazon Prime still made sense for the most part. So let me actually see if I can uh, find anything about the actual um, <laughs> release of the film on Homey. It says here, the first THX certified Laserdisc title of the special edition box set was released in 1993 in both widescreen and full screen and was a bestseller for the rest of the year. Special edition released on VHS in 96 as a part of the Fox Video's widescreen series with seven minute behind the scenes featurette with footage about the film. Special edition's first DVD was in 2000 on two discs featured animated menus, both theatrical and special edition versions of the film via seamless branching along with Laserdisc's extensive text, artwork, 10-minute featurette, 60-minute documentary. Special edition is also available, a bare-bones full-screen version on DVD. All available DVDs are non-anamorphic and the exception of the China. Okay, so that actually makes a little bit more sense. So basically, Amazon Prime seemingly, I guess because it was cheaper, decided to get the, I guess, the DVD version, the DVD quality version of the movie with the cutoff full-screen edition. So 
Shame on you, Amazon, for doing that. <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, this goes on to say, in 2014, a pay cable channel, Cinemax and HBO, began broadcasting both versions of the film in 1080p. Netflix UK service began offering the theatrical version in 1080 and uh, 1080p in 2017. At a October 2014 event, James Cameron was asked about a future Blu-ray release of the film. Cameron gestured to the head of the Fox Entertainment, implying it laid with the studio. Then it says, while promoting the upcoming 30th edition Blu-ray of Aliens at 2016, James Cameron confirmed that he was working on the remastered 4K transfer of The Abyss, and it would be released on Blu-ray for the first time in early 2017. We've done a Wetgate 4K scan of the original in March 2019. Digital Interme uh, Intermediate Colorist posted a photo on his Instagram suggesting he was working on the film. In November 2018, Cameron told Empire that a Blu-ray transfer was complete for my review, and he hoped it would be ready before 2019. So this just goes to show, I think James Cameron, again, is just caught in Pandora land because he's saying that they were working on a Blu-ray transfer years ago and still even in 2019 they had not had a legit Blu-ray edition of the movie itself and again as far back as 2018 him saying that it's it's ready for his review apparently it says this was before Disney's acquisition of Fox so as of 2020 there's no information about the Blu-ray release so I guess we can definitely uh, throw some shade at Disney for potentially uh, mucking up the works on this because man I would love to get a Blu-ray edition of this movie and also to be able to see it without it being in this boxed aspect ratio and so it looks like the only way to do that is it seems that there is indeed a special edition DVD, but when I was looking on Amazon, I, it didn't pop up right away. Uh, again, maybe I was just looking in the wrong place, but also maybe the Laserdisc had a better uh, actual quality in the widescreen format. But anyway, uh, for anyone that was interested in what's going on with the Blu-ray release and 4K release of the movie, it's, it's stuck in, I would say, Disneyland and in Pandora Land, because we can obviously blame Disney for holding up the transfers of this movie, but really in the end, if James Cameron really wanted to do it, it would happen. James Cameron clearly has a lot of pull in Hollywood. The fact that they were able to give him a billion dollars to make all of these different <laughs> Avatar movies in advance, assuming that they would be financial successes like the first one, shows you that they obviously have confidence in him and that he clearly has enough control to be able to get, garner that kind of trust. So if this dude wanted to, if he really wanted to give the fans of this film, of other films that he's been working on and has done in the past, to give a proper 4K transfer, he would do it. But obviously, this is the same guy that did a terrible transfer and greenlit a terrible transfer of Terminator 2 on both Blu-ray and additionally on 4K. So, hey, uh, it is what it is. But going back to The Abyss, again, great score, great cinematography, really great storytelling as well. This is really James Cameron at his best, working with great actors who, again, are doing a lot of these stunts underwater themselves. And it's always very much appreciated when actors put themselves through that. A lot of really interesting concepts, such as, you know, what pressure does to the person and to certain items underwater. There's just really cool... Uh, uh, idea mentioned about oxygenize oxen i probably me totally messing that up uh liquid and how one can breathe it and there's this one great line saying you know we breathe liquid for nine months out of our life your body will adjust just things like that are just really awesome concepts that are introduced in this movie so if you've never seen the abyss i recommend it though it looks like it might be better to try and find a special edition of the film Preferably in widescreen, because if you go with the Amazon Prime edition, it is going to be this TV boxed version, and it looks like it's also the regular edition of the film as well. So anyway, if I had to give this movie a score, I'd give it an A-. minus. Again, the special edition might be able to bump that up a little bit. I do think presentation had an impact, and I know that that's more so on Amazon's fault than anyone else, but again, the fact that James Cameron has the money, has the ability and the capacity to put out a proper release of this movie and is just not doing it because he'd rather do Avatar makes me think that he doesn't really care as much about what fans of this franchise really, or rather of this film really want. So what are your thoughts about The Abyss? Have you ever seen it? What are your thoughts about it? Do you agree with me that it's a fantastic sci-fi film? And uh, today uh, and the rest of the week, I were doing online schooling. And so there's a, a chance that I might be able to put out some more reviews of films that I've already seen that I've been trying to work on. And uh, again, a lot of those will probably be posted exclusively to Minds.com and to Odyssey since YouTube's algorithm sucks. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, light up the fire button on Odyssey. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my April Patreon and Subscribestar members, Andrew Hoyle. Animation Commentator, Biffer de Hobbit, Brian P, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Dion, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, 
humor, and hobbies. Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Lance, Laura Story, The Modern Major General, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and His Evil Twin with the Beautiful Hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and of course, the Empress of the Universe, Tina B. And my subscribe star remembers, remembers? Subscribe star remember, <laughs> I did it again. Subscribe star members, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan 4, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, slash the new number two, J-Rod, the beer guru, Nevanon G. Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you to all of my Patreon and Subscribe Star members. If you want your name shouted out at the end of every single video and live stream, check out the links in the description to find out how to sign up on Patreon and Subscribe Star. Also, you'll find out how to get access to things like giveaways of Blu-rays and 4K titles and digital codes, and also access to an exclusive podcast for my Keepers of the Bifrost, and also the Chosen of Valhalla level, where you can not only get all of those things you also get a t-shirt and get to be featured on a live stream once a month hosted on the omb reviews channel anyway if you want to have access to any of those things check out the links in the description for patreon and subscribe star for more information you guys are all amazing and beautiful people I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always god bless